It's the third week in March and this is the time when spring is definitely on its way. The pictures I'm showing you here, this is a ornamental peach blossom. It's grown for the flowers and not for the fruit. It seldom produces fruit. This is only a young tree that I planted about four years ago and already it's about I would say 12 feet high, 12 feet tall. There's a magnolia at the top over it. And we have in early spring, these beautiful camellia blossom. I love camellia, but the only sad thing about camellia is whenever you grow camellia, they always go caught by the frost. If you have uh, just one night of frost, it will brown the tips. So however beautiful they are, uh, they get caught by the spring frost. I'm just showing you another one. This is a white one, beautiful white one. And just around the corner here, we have some ornamental as rhododendrons. They are miniature rhododendrons. And in the far corner, I have a star magnolia. The star magnolia is the Magnolia stellata, but this one is a soft mauve color. It's not white. Most of the common stellata are white in color, but this has got a soft mauve color. Certainly when the flowers are young, they have this lovely mauve color. Again, this bush I planted about 10 years ago. It's already about three meters or more high. There are many other plants which have not yet come into flower. This is my poor vegetable garden, but I've got to dig the weeds out. But look at my rhubarb plants. I grow rhubarb because my children love rhubarb. They make rhubarb pie with it. As I walk through the garden, I'm going to show you something which is really the main object of this talk today. What I'm going to talk about today is making bonsai out of Forsythia. People don't believe me that most of my very nice bonsai are made from ordinary plants. Now this is a hedging Forsythia. You can see this is my yew hedge. It's about eight to 10 feet tall. And I grow Forsythia also as a hedge. You can see clearly that it is a hedge. And although the stems are so long, they produce stems about one meter or three feet every year. But right at the base there, hidden away among all the ivy, you will find that there is a thick trunk. I'm renewing my fence over here. I'm remaking the fence because the recent storms brought it down. And I did dig up, there's another Forsythia hedge growing in the U. I dug up a Forsythia which was in the way. And this is the Forsythia I dug up with a digger. I dug it up because it was not really doing anything, but look at the trunk at the base. That base is every bit 10 to 12 inches across. And when I cut it back to about a foot, that is going to be the future of my bonsai. In case you think I'm kidding you, look at the shoot. This is a Forsythia flower, and this is a Forsythia bush that I've dug up. So this will be a future bonsai with a beautiful trunk. Since we are talking about flowers, I must show you this because many people think that I don't grow flowers, but this is a beautiful amaryllis that I've grown. And here's another one, different variety. Unfortunately, the slugs are eating it, but they're lovely flowers. Look at the buds that are on this one. They'll produce about two or three stems at least. So this is what I grow. 
And this is my conservatory where I keep my focuses. I overwinter them in here. And they're all in very good condition. And the temperature of this room is in the coldest of the night, it gets to 10 degrees. But in the daytime, it's about six degrees. So ficuses, as long as you don't let them freeze, they do well. So continuing with the theme of the flowers, this is a magnolia that has been growing here since I came here in 1985. So I would say this tree would be about as old as the house. Our house was built in 1966. And I dare say this magnolia must have been planted then. So I would say it's about 50 years old and it's got a beautiful multi trunk. I will just go around the back and show you the trunk. Let me just walk around and show you the trunk. Give you a glimpse of our nursery. It's a massive tree. Look at the trunk of that tree. I've grown it a multi-trunk style. Okay, we will now talk about the main subject, which is making Forsythia bonsai. I'm very proud of this Forsythia. Those of you who follow me on Facebook may have seen this Forsythia. This Forsythia, like many of my thick trunk trees, are dug up from the hedge or from the garden and look at the thickness of the trunk. It must have been about 10, 12 feet high. And if you come close, you will see what I've done. I just chopped the stems off. There were about three or four trunks. One, two, three, four, four thick trunks, about two or three inches in diameter, maybe more. And I've let these new shoots grow. So this one has been training, you won't believe, only about three years. And just from letting the shoots grow, I make it like a hedgehog or a broom style. I expose the roots because I couldn't cut the roots any shallower than that. So I've used the roots as a feature. So this is my Forsythia bonsai, which I'm very proud of. And many people have asked me to sell this, but I'm not keen to sell it. Now, in case you don't know Forsythia, this is a plant that was discovered maybe about 150 or maybe possibly 200 years ago in Western China by this plant hunter called Forsyth. And there are many varieties of Forsyth here. This one I think is called Intermedia, which is a hedging Forsyth here. There are many varieties. I'm going to show you one or two other varieties. This is another Forsyth here. It doesn't pretend to be a bonsai. And in fact, it was made by a dear friend of my wife who passed away, I think in the year 2007, she passed away 13 years ago. And I've always kept this uh, pot of Forsyth here because she made it and I've never disturbed it. And in fact, over the 13 years, I've never repotted this tree. So it's been in this pot all this time, but it's just a memory that I have of her. And look at it, it's just a simple forest. But when it's flowering, it's such a delightful little thing. So just goes to show you don't have to make a thick trunk tree. Just having a little forest like this is very beautiful. Now let's show you some more Forsythia that are still in the process of training. While I'm passing, I'll show you these again. These are my lovely Fuji cherry. This is a pale pink one. And then I have a deep pink one. This is my pride and joy. It's a big tree, really big tree. When you compare it to that massive pine. Look at it, it's covered in flower, absolutely covered in flower. So that's it for flowering trees. Now let's get back to our subject of the foresight. We have so many Forsyth here. Now this one I think is different from that other hedging one. The flowers are different. Just as I said, there's so many different varieties. This really should be cut hard back. You can see these very lanky stems. 
doesn't really go with the thickness of the trunk. So for a bonsai this size, the tree should only be about this size. It's got lovely like driftwood features and I've just grown it so that it looks beautiful with the flowers. Look at the driftwood effect on this. If you home in close, look at that beautiful natural driftwood. And it's a stark contrast to the beautiful flowers. I should really, as you've heard my expression, bite the bullet and cut it hard back over here and make it a more compact plant. I've got another one there. Again, it's got thick trunk and we've got some crab apple seedlings growing in there. So what I'm trying to show you is that for Saitya it's quite easy to make into bonsai. I will now, now show you some that I imported from Japan years ago. Let's go into the tunnel. What I want to show you are these Forsythia that I bought from Japan maybe about 12-15 years ago and you can see that they have these thick trunks, absolutely massive thick trunks but for some reason the shoots always die back so they were not a good buy. Look at it, they're suckering from the base. Uh, this was also another thick trunk one if you can see this one. See, that's the original trunk, massive trunk like that, about two inches in diameter, but all the shoots died. I'm trying to revive it, but it won't be the same as before. So, for Saite like this, I produced a Shohin Bonsai in Japan. There's another one with a thick trunk, but again, I think I'll have to grow it again. But there's no reason why you can't make the thing. If you get a shrub with a thick trunk, cut it hard back to about two or three inches from the ground, and let it produce shoots again. So it's simple as that. I will now show you some younger Forsythia bonsai that are produced just from ordinary cuttings. Let's walk along here. You can enjoy this plastic tunnel where we grow a lot of our plants. Look at the flowers on these Forsythia. Now this is a different variety. It is so dense in the flower. Really, really dense and very thick, fat petals. And although they don't have a massive trunk, we grow them just for the beauty of the flowers. And they're very easy to propagate from cuttings. You just snip a bit of the hard wood and stick it in the soil. And within three months, it should root. But they make really lovely uh, uh, bonsai. I'm now going to take you to our field growing area because I dug another forsythia up from a hedge and that is waiting to be made into a bonsai. So let's go there. Another forsythia that I was telling you about. Look at the size of the trunk. It's almost like a trident maple trunk. All these ferns growing here I don't want. More weeds and plants. And I show you this size because they always have this beautiful driftwood and uh, this I could carve, but you can see all the makings of a nice bonsai there. If we come around the other side, this side is as beautiful. Look at that. So don't ignore these beautiful plants because they all make nice bonsai. I know that they don't um, have beauty rest of the year when they're not in bloom. And I just noticed that they sucker as well. Look at these, these suckers make small bonsai. So the trick is, after they flower, they produce long shoots, but if you cut it hard back, then they will keep it compact and you will get flowers from these new shoots. They produce flowers on the wood that is produced in the current season. And isn't that beautiful? Certainly deserves a bonsai pot now. So there you go. I hope this has inspired you to make bonsai from the spring flowering plants of which the Forsythia is one of my favorites.